Silverbride Green Greg here, and today we're going to react to this homeowner who has regretted getting solar. And he's furious! Furious, I tell you! Furious! Let's find out what happened and see if we can help him out. After six years of having solar panels is that we didn't go with an established and reputable company for the installation of the panels. Shortly after moving into our home here, we had several solar salespeople knocking on the door trying to get us to sign up with their solar plans. So after doing our research and spending several months going through this, we finally settled on a particular company to go with, and we thought they did a great job. They were very professional, very courteous, they could answer all of our questions, and they did the install in a great way. We were very happy with it. So much so that we referred our neighbors to them and they got solar panels from this company and my parents as well so needless to say we felt very confident in this company but as it turns out within a few years this company went belly up so now we have no options to contact customer service if we have questions or inquiries or troubles there is no technical support for anything and there are no offerings for upgrades or compatibility issues anything like that we are on our own because we didn't go with a reputable company if he says the company was not reputable. Um, I'm gonna disagree with that because he just said they did a great job. The solar system is working, right? And he even referred his parents and his neighbors to that same company and they did a great job, right? But the company went out of business. That doesn't mean they weren't reputable. It sounds like they were reputable if they did a great job, but more than likely what has happened is the company was not profitable and they went out of business. If I were starting from scratch today and wanted to have a company install solar for me, I would look at a few different things. I would do plenty of homework and research online to make sure there are plenty of good reviews for the support, for the quality of the products, for the warranties, and for the installation options as well. So one of the companies that I've been checking out and been very impressed with is actually Tesla. If you're not familiar, they actually make, of course, the solar roofs that you may have heard of with the different actual individual shingles and everything, but they also sell a totally traditional solar panel system. So it's a big company, it's reputable, they have a great set of apps and services that go along with it so that you can keep an eye on everything, and it's Tesla. It's not your neighborhood Joe who you're not sure if they're going to be around in a few years. So first of all, I agree with them to check the, the company's history, the reviews online, you know, check the warranties of the manufacturer, check out the manufacturer of the equipment. I agree with all that part. I disagree with them about, about Tesla and about having a local installer. Okay, so here's Tesla's website. And the first thing I'm looking at is, wh where's, the, where's the phone number? How, how can I contact these people if I got problems with my solar? That's a red flag right there. You should be able to easily contact the solar installer if there's an issue. And so for me, this is very disturbing. As there's no phone number, basically means we don't wanna to talk to you. That, that, that's ridiculous. And by the way, I've been in this industry since 2007. So I can tell you that even though everything's got a 25 year warranty, at some point, the solar system is going to need service. It could be that, hey, your roof needs to be replaced and you have to remove and reinstall the solar system or that, hey, there's a malfunction or there's some equipment that's not working. Different things can happen, right? I mean, just like any vehicle, right? I mean, even though they got a great warranty, they still have garages, right? They still have to fix stuff. <laughs> Same thing with solar. So. The first thing I look at is how easy it is to contact with them and also again the reviews. Okay, so I recommend for a big company, a national company to use a company like Solar Reviews. Okay, they are a non-biased source. They review equipment mainly, but also people do post reviews about the solar contractor and about the manufacturer of the equipment. But in this case, um, Tesla Solar has got three stars out of 800 reviews. Now look, everybody's got good reviews and bad reviews, but Three stars, I think, is not a good sign. And again, not having a phone number on a website is not a good sign. Review, uh, they've been amazing to work with, blah, 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 fine. But here's a review that's pretty troubling. This is about a year old. No customer support when panels don't produce power. That's no bueno. No bueno. Eight-week reinstall time. This customer had replaced their roof. And so basically, they lost about two months' worth of electric. And it kind of goes on and on. So this is, this is no bueno. Um, like I said, Solar Reviews, I think is a little better to use when you're looking for a national company, but a local company, you're better off looking at Google Reviews because that's where most people are gonna post most of the time is Google Reviews. I could not find Google Reviews for Tesla. Um, it's just so many news 
and, and things about Tesla that it's kind of hard to find Google reviews. And I'm going to disagree with them a bit about having a local contractor versus having a national contractor. So herein is the issue, is that if you have a national contractor, yeah, they might be a huge company, but you know how it is to deal with huge companies? I'm sure you've experienced it where you try to call an 800 number and you're press this, press that, press this other thing. Uh, you know, then it goes to a voicemail or then it's a long hold time. You know, it, it's ridiculous. I don't know about you, but I, I hate that. I hate that. I think you would agree it's a lot better to actually have a local company that are nearby and you could easily contact them. And if you got an issue, because they're nearby, they can take care of you and give you personalized service. That's just been my experience. And not to bash Tesla or the other big companies, but quite frankly, again, I've been doing this since 2007 and I've heard the good, bad and ugly. And Tesla in particular, um, they do not have a good track record on service from what I've heard from customers. I've recently, for instance, had a customer, they replaced the roof. It took them months for Tesla actually to finally respond. That. And then when they just because a company is large doesn't mean that they're gonna be around. So here's a press release that LG decided to exit the solar panel business. LG has been in the solar business since the 1940s and they're a huge company. But unfortunately, the solar panel business is a very thin margin business, the one digit margin business. So they exit the solar business. There's no guarantees anybody's gonna be a business. This is a very large company, you just never know. Here's a company called Pearson Dean. They were in the top 10 solar installers in the whole country and they filed bankruptcy. They were in nine states and they filed bankruptcy. So just because a company's big doesn't mean that they're gonna be around. Tesla themselves has actually canceled some homeowners uh, projects on the solar roof. They put down deposits, Tesla canceled the contract. So what does that tell you? Does that mean that Tesla's gonna be a, around forever, that they're always gonna be in solar business? I, I question this and they've already proven that they might not follow through. And by the way, there's always been some question with Tesla whether they're gonna stay in the solar energy business because quite frankly, again, the solar panel business and installation business is a very thin margin business. And if you don't watch your cost, if you don't have a good profit margin, you're gonna find yourself out of that business. And so Tesla, the last I heard, they were losing money on their solar business. But of course, they're very successful in their vehicle business. So I think that temptation is gonna be there at some point to say the heck with the solar energy business and just concentrate on the vehicles because they're a winner there, let's face it. They're, they're dominating that market. So there's gonna be some point where the management or even shareholders, I believe, are going to demand that they focus on the vehicle business because that's where the money's made, right? And everybody is investing in Tesla stock to make money. That's the whole point. So, no. I would say your best choice is to actually go with the local installer and go with the reputable manufacturer. And by the way, he talked about installation options. Tesla does not have that many installation options. They only feature their own solar panels and their own inverter at this time and their own racking. So they don't offer different brands of solar panels. They don't offer different brands of inverters. They don't offer micro inverters. They do not give options, okay? I would say they got the least options of any solar installation company I've seen. My personal opinion is get a local local solar contractor. I've done. If I were to do this again today, I would do it myself. I would hire an electrician and work with him or her to try to get everything set up to where I could get my permits. I could make sure that everything was wired and measured correctly as far as amperage and voltage and supplying what we need. So that's the route I would go. Now I understand how a homeowner could think that, hey, it looks very simple because they're seeing the finished product, right? They're seeing the system already assembled and on the roof. However, it's actually a lot more complicated than you think. If you ever witness a solar installation, they usually have a whole crew of like three or four people and they're there two days installing the system. And by the way, for each home, we have to do a custom set of engineering drawings where an engineer who's trained has to calculate the electrical and the building 
in different aspects of the solar system so it's done the right way. You know, I've heard so many horror stories where a homeowner try to do it themselves and they can't get to pass inspection or the roof leaks, et cetera, et cetera. And then you're really on your own because nobody wants to service a system that's installed by a do-it-yourselfer. The other thing is the manufacturer, they will not give you full technical support if it's installed by a do-it-yourselfer. Why? Because if you burn out a $3,000 inverter, they're not going to be responsible. If you start a home fire, they don't want to be responsible. <laughs> if your roof leaks, they don't want to be responsible because the dude yourself or didn't know what they were doing and they weren't trained and they're not, they're not properly licensed um, and trained for the solar installation. I mean, you can understand how that is. I mean, obviously. So then you're really on your own, but I'll show you. Now, this is a bit different though, if you're just doing like a cabin, if you're just doing like a cabin and you're trying to run, you know, uh, some lights, a TV and internet, little things like that, you can buy some pre-assembled kits and just a handful of solar panels and those you can do yourself. But a home system is very high voltage and you gotta make sure everything is done properly. Okay, so I know he said he was getting an electrician. Yes, you can pull a permit with an electrician's license. He would have to get training with the solar equipment manufacturer. And a company like Enphase or Solar Edge or SMA, they actually have training and certification for solar installers, and they have to get that training. And by the way, it's not just electrical, but now you also, again, have to worry about building. Remember I was telling you about the mounting of the solar panels and make sure those comply with the code and set packs and make sure everything is sealed properly on the roof. So it's important to get somebody who's either a solar contractor who's certified with that manufacturer or an electrician who has gone through the solar training. And by the way, nine times out of 10, maybe even 10 out of 10, um, those contractors are not going to want to install equipment from somewhere else because, hey, what happens if that equipment is defective? Now, who's going to pay to remove and reinstall that equipment, right? And, and they don't even know if the equipment is genuine or if it's a factory second or if it's a defect. We don't know where the equipment has come from. And if you bought it out of state, you know, now the contractors have to come, you know, uninstall it off the rooftop. You know, the customers have to go exchange the equipment, ship it back out, get it shipped back in, and then the contractors have to come back. No, no contractor wants to mess around with that. It could actually cost you less to do your own solar system with a full battery backup than it would cost you to pay someone to do a solar system installed without a battery backup. Okay, so here's the thing is homeowners think, oh my God, these solar companies charging so much money. Why are they charging so much? Because they're just looking at the price of the solar panels and the inverters, and they don't realize how many extra hidden costs there are. For instance, just the materials only to run the electrical from the circuit panel or from the side of the house up to the rooftop, materials only could cost you a couple thousand dollars. And we're not even talking about labor yet included. Add in engineering, add in permitting, and you got another thousand. Now we spent $3,000. We haven't even talked about the labor we haven't talked about the racking. We haven't talked about the solar panels. We haven't talked about the inverters. And we haven't talked about, you know, the, the paperwork and administering the project. So there's a lot of costs involved that are hidden. I think you're not going to save as much money as you think you're going to save. And then you're really going to be on your own because nobody's going to want to service a system that you installed yourself. Okay. Nobody's going to want to touch that. My second biggest regret after six years of solar is that we never had a monitoring and alert system installed on our solar panel system. So if something were to go wrong with that, we wouldn't know unless we physically went out and checked, and I'll talk more about that in just a second. So for the most part, when you set up your solar panels and everything is installed correctly, it's kind of a set it and forget it sort of situation. You don't have to worry about constantly checking it. It is kind of fun though to see how it's doing. We had this insane dust storm mixed with a rainstorm that coated everything in mud. And it was obvious at that time that I needed to clean my solar panels. So I got up on the roof and I washed them down and thought I was good. 
As it turns out, I mostly rinsed them and didn't do a great job at washing them. So as a result of that kind of shoddy workmanship, in July and August, which are typically some of my best producing months, I produced 30% less power than I normally would have because there was kind of a gross film on them that was blocking the sun's rays from coming in. Now, that's not the only time that's happened, but I haven't been aware of it because there's nothing telling me. I don't have an app. I don't have any really easy way to see that. In fact, my inverter, it's a string inverter that I've got out here. And as you can see, this is really difficult to see anything on it at this point. Can't see what's going on anymore. So I'm kind of out of touch with how that's doing. Now, because of the issue that I mentioned for my third biggest regret, I no longer can contact the company that I've Okay, so let's break this down. He, uh, let's talk about the monitoring app. So he has an older inverter and he cannot monitor it. And it's a good thing to have a monitoring system. For example, here's Enphase. They've got an app and you can tell what your solar system is doing. You could also have individual panel monitoring and automatic alerts if something happens to your solar system, like it's not producing or a solar panel is out, for instance. Um, you can tell with this app, and there's a lifetime subscription with Enphase, by the way. He has a, what they call a central inverter, which is one box that all the solar panels are tied into on the side of the house, okay? I recommend something like an Enphase. These are micro inverters, so each panel has its own inverter. And so if one panel goes out, or one panel is dirty, or one panel is shaded, you'll be able to tell that from the app, okay? So that's something he can't do right now, um, even if he got that internet connection for that string inverter. So also if one solar panel went bad for some reason, the rest of the system would keep on trucking. So it is advantageous to actually get a microinverter system, not a central inverter. It is more money by the way, but it's the right way to go. Also, if some solar panels are shaded, it won't affect the other solar panels, okay? By the way, on the side of the house here, they've got a combiner box and some batteries. That's what they're showing in this picture. I bought this from and get some support to get an internet module installed. I'm on my own to try to figure that out. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'll get that installed, but it's a bigger pain in the butt than if I would have just been able to call a company and say, what do I need? Okay, you see the name right on it. It says SMA right here. Call the manufacturer, tell them, hey, my installer's out of business. Can you please point me to a few authorized installers in my area? Simple. Okay, so it's a shame your installer's out of business, but again, you're going to be supported by the manufacturer. And that leads me to my number one biggest regret after six years of solar, and that is having the wrong sized system. I thought that we were making some really wise choices and really thinking ahead when we purchased our solar system. We have a 7.65 kilowatt system. There are six of us in the house, and at the time, that was more than enough. We definitely factored in some growth in there, knowing that as the kids got older, they might use more electricity, have more people over, all that sort of thing, and that as technology increased, our consumption of power would likely increase as well. But what we didn't foresee is the fact that these kids are using a lot of electricity, that I have 20 3D printers now, that I have a wood shop with a bunch of power hungry tools, that I'm now a full time YouTuber and I stay home and that eats up a lot of energy just by virtue of me being home all the time, using more air conditioning, using my computers and different things like that. And that's to say nothing of what happened during the pandemic when we had six people at home all the time using devices the entire time. Oh yeah, and then there's that little stint where I spent four months mining crypto and like tripled our electric bill. So there's that too. So as you can imagine, our consumption of power has steadily increased as we've become more and more dependent on technologies and spend more and more time at home. However, our production from the solar panels has not increased. And as a result, we are now, instead of paying $9 a month, which for Rocky Mountain Power, who we use as our power supply, is the minimum that you can pay. And we did that for years. Then we started seeing $20 bills and 40 and 60. And then we even have reached numbers of 200. And that's again during that crypto time when we were just producing very little because of the winter and using a ton of energy. But that is not what I want to see. I want to see it keep up. Yeah, the electric company is gonna charge you between what you produced and what you used. And if you use more electric, you're gonna, you're gonna pay the electric company more. As simple as that. Now this is a little bit crazy. He's got 20 3D printers and you know, he's doing crypto mining, plus he's at home all the time, plus he's got a workshop. Um, you know, that's a bit nutty and that's hard to predict. You're, most people aren't gonna do all that. Your, your home electric use, 
usually ends up going down unless you're adding people or unless you're adding electric vehicle. Why? Because air conditioners, for instance, are getting more efficient. Uh, so are furnaces, by the way. And people are doing things like adding better insulated windows, adding attic insulation. So all those things can actually reduce electric as well. So it's some give and take, but you want to try to size your solar system based on your annual electric use, plus if you're planning on doing any additional electric use, such as EV vehicles, or you're planning on working from home all the time, you might want to add some buffer there. But this is a little bit nutty. And yes, this is one of the misconceptions about homeowners. They think, oh, if I just put a solar system up, I can use all the electric I want, and I should still get that $9 bill. No, because that solar system, it's sized to produce X amount of kilowatt hours based on probably your last year's electric use, right? So, so now I've got two options. The first option is that I can just be happy that I've got solar producing something and pay the difference. That's a totally reasonable option. But the second option that I'm more interested in is how do I expand my system to have more available power to match our power consumption needs? So with that, I can add more solar panels up to our roof and I can use micro inverters, which allow you to add as many as you need without the string inverter, the one larger inverter to handle everything and having it scaled just so. You can always do a phase two system, add on more solar panels later. As long as it's a decent amount of solar panels, um, it's not worth it to add like two extra solar panels. But I have done systems where we've done an initial install of like 30 solar panels and then came back later and installed another 10 solar panels, okay? So that is possible. With it. Now, after mentioning these three regrets, you might be thinking, are you regretting getting solar? And the answer is absolutely not. I'm so glad I got solar. I would do it again today in a heartbeat and I recommend to everyone to check it out, but do your homework and make sure that you know what you're getting and that you get what's best for your situation. Not upset, he's not furious. Um, but I think some of the expectations were a little bit unreasonable, but Hey, that's all right. So, sir, you said that you don't regret getting the solar system, but you got that face about you. What happened, sir? Did you order that big and spicy bean burrito? Is that what happened? Do you have heartburn? Are you backed up? That's not the fault of the solar system. That's your fault for ordering a big and spicy bean burrito. Yes, it's your fault, not the fault of the solar system. Just go to your drugstore and pick something up for that, okay? And I hope that you're feeling better. Thank you. Solar by Green Greg here, and on this channel, we cover solar PV, solar pool heating, and light troubleshooting. You know, just simple things that a homeowner can do themselves, like, you know, flip a few circuit breakers, that sort of stuff. And Look, I've been in this industry since 2007, so I know all the, the tricks and tips, and I know the insider secrets, but I'm also a homeowner too, just like you, and I know what it's like. You know, you're just trying to get information. You don't want sales talk, you want information. You want honest information. And maybe you're also just trying to do, you know, a quick troubleshooting to avoid a service call. And if that's you, you just want information and not sales talk, hey, you're in the right spot. Go ahead, hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell. And by the way, you know, leave a comment. Let me know where you're from and what next topic do you want me to cover in a future video? Thank you so much and have a great sunny day. Bye-bye for now.